Good morning and welcome to worship for the three parishes of the Sidlaws, Barnhill St Margaret's and Monifeith Parish Church. This week we are inspired by Barnhill's online holiday club and some of our songs today you might remember from Sunday school or your own children's learning. But our very first hymn has been written especially for us today um, to a tune you will definitely know. Let us worship God together. God stayed with Joseph through it all. Trees have been torn apart. We wonder what the gifts of God can bring to every Sadness turned to joy for me, stood by me, you beside. She said, your folk shall be my folk, your God shall be my God. Joseph, Job and Daniel. You are the God behind all acts of faith and courage. You are the God who beckons us forward towards justice and peace. You are the God accompanying each person at every moment. So we rejoice in your constant presence and perfect love. Hold us when we worry about the future, consuming today's energy on what ifs. Have mercy when we nervously guard resources despite the needs of others. Stay patient when we cannot discern the right way as we approach the various crossroads of our lives. Forgive us when we willfully turn our backs on you on others, on whatever honours our own bodies. 
be gentle with us, merciful God, and love us into fuller action, action which acknowledges the giftedness of our own lives and the responsibility we have to care for others, all shown to us through the life, teaching and prayers of Jesus, one of which we offer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Over the past couple of weeks, children associated with Barn Hill have been learning about some key characters in the Bible. And all of these characters help to show the faithfulness of God and God's inclusive love. For all. We've picked just three of these characters, Noah, Jonah and Ruth, and they have a theme of travelling somehow to fulfil God's requirements. We hope you enjoy hearing the stories of these three travelling heroes, beginning with Noah. Hello. This is the story of Noah. Let's watch as we tell it together. When God had created everything, God said, it is good. But people began to do bad things. God decided to send a flood of water to wash everything clean again. Then God saw a good family. The father was a man called Noah. This is his wife, Nema. In her aprons, she gathered the seeds that would sow the plants in the new world. Noah and Nema had three sons. And they each had wives. Noah walked with God. He came so close to God and God came so close to Noah that Noah knew exactly what God wanted him to do. God wanted Noah to build a big boat called an ark. Noah and his family began to build the ark. As they were building the ark, animals came from the four corners of the earth. They came two by two to fill the ark.
when the ark was finished, Noah let all the animals on board. And he got in with his wife and his family too. And it began to rain. At first, it was just like any other rain. But it kept coming. Soon there were puddles. And the puddles grew bigger and bigger. Until they ran together. And soon... The water covered everything. When the creatures on the ark looked out on the rain, all they could see was water. It rained and it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The water got higher and higher and higher. But God did not forget the creatures on the ark. After 40 days and 40 nights, the rain stopped. Then God sent a great wind to dry up the water and it began to go down. Noah took a dove. He sent it out to see if it could find dry land. He held his hand out and it came back. There was still nothing but water. Noah waited seven days and sent the dove out again. This time, when the dove came back, it had a fresh olive branch in its beak. Now there was something green and growing on earth. Noah waited seven more days and the water kept going down. He sent the dove out again. This time, the dove did not come back. It had found somewhere to make a nest and stayed there. The water kept going down. Eventually, the ark came to rest upon the earth on a mountain called Ararat. The creatures began to come out of the ark. They were so happy to be out of the ark that they could not help it and sang and prayed in thanks to God. Noah set up an altar so that they could say prayers and tell God 
how thankful they were. So they gave thanks to God. Suddenly, all the creatures saw a great bowl in the sky. It had many colours. You can still see that bowl today when the sun shines after the rain. We call it a rainbow. The rainbow is God's sign to say that God will never send a big flood like that again. The creatures went out into all the corners of the earth and filled it again with life. I wonder, what part of the story did you like best? I wonder, what part of the story is most important? I wonder, what part of the story could you see yourself in? I wonder, what difference does the story make? At the beginning of Noah's story, we learned that humans were acting very badly and all kingdoms were filled with terrible violence. God had intended the world to be the most perfect home for humans, where they would live in harmony with each other, animals and God. So God was heartbroken to see that humans were ruining the world and all their relationships. To protect the goodness of the world, God washed it clean with the flood by destroying everything so he can rid the world of evil. But there was one man who was good and followed God, a man called Noah. So God had a plan to protect Noah and his family. God asked Noah to build a big boat called an ark that would be big enough for Noah, his family, and at least two of every kind of animal. Once they were all in the ark, God flooded the earth. Once the world had been cleansed of all the evil and the flood disappeared, Noah and his family worshipped God and thanked him for rescuing them. Then God made a special promise called a covenant with Noah, his family and all future generations, saying that he would never again flood the earth, even though he knew that human beings would continue to do bad things that made God unhappy. God then created the rainbow as a sign of this promise, a reminder to both God and all of humanity. All throughout the the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdown. The rainbow has been a symbol of hope for the world, just as it is in today's story about Noah. It is a symbol of hope in the promises of God and his faithfulness to his people, that God will protect them and all of creation, even when life is difficult and there are bad things happening all around us. We saw this today in Noah's story. God blessed Noah and his family because he was faithful to God even when there were so many bad things happening around him. Noah continued to be faithful in the flood, trusting and obeying God, even when he must have felt nervous about what was happening. This is an example for us, showing us that God wants human beings to be good and to follow him just as Noah did. This is because God, because God loves us and he wants us to love him in return. Perhaps we can think about the hope that we have in God and his faithfulness and protection when we see the beautiful rainbows that have been created throughout lockdown. Let's thank God for the hope that we have in him and for his love for us. And let us always remember that we have this true and certain hope in, in God. And this is shown in, in the death of his son on the cross 
de Jesus Christ's death on the cross, this shows that we have a sure hope that God loves us and protects us. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your beautiful creation. And thank you that you promise to protect those who trust in you. And we pray that we will hold on to that truth, even when we find it difficult to do so. Please be with us as we live for you, trusting in you and your son, Jesus Christ, who ultimately showed your love for us in his death on the cross. We pray that we would come to know him more and more each and every day as we read your word, we read the Bible, and that we spend time with you in prayer. We pray for all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Soon, oh, I built an ark. The people thought it's such a lark. Mister, no, I believe it so. But into the ark they would not go. Down came the rain in torrents. Down came the rain in torrents. Down came the rain in torrents. And only it was safe. The animals went into by two. The elephant, the bear, and the kangaroo. All were safely stored away on that great and awful day. Down came the rain in torrents. Down came the rain in torrents. Down came the rain in torrents, and only it was safe. Whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, whenever you see a rainbow, remember God is love. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah and said, Arise, go to the great city of Nineveh. Tell them that they have been bad people. They must change their ways and become good. Now prophets are people who come so close to God and God comes so close to them that they know exactly what God is telling them to do. 
But Jonah turned and went the other way. He found a ship going to Tarshish in Spain. That's as far away from Nineveh as you can go. Suddenly, a great storm broke out. The waves got very high. And the sailors were afraid. They threw everything they were carrying into the ocean to help make the ship lighter so they could keep floating. Now a prophet is someone who helps people discover what is the right thing to do. So the sailors went looking for Jonah. Do you know where they found him? He was asleep at the bottom of the boat. The captain commanded him to call on his God to save them. But all Jonah did was climb up onto the deck of the boat. Now people were even more afraid. They decided to cast lots to see who God was angry at. They wanted to throw that person overboard to get rid of them. Now a prophet is someone who can speak for the one true God. But Jonah still did not speak. The sailors asked him who he was. He told them he worshipped God the one who made the sea and the dry land. Then the sailors were afraid. They knew that he was trying to flee from God. The sea grew even more troubled. So Jonah said, throw me in and the storm will stop. So they threw him in. All was suddenly quiet. The sea was calm. Now a prophet is someone who brings people close to God by what he or she says and does. Jonah had said nothing. But when the sea grew calm, the sailors all fell down and worshipped the true God. Now a prophet is someone who is close to God. And a false prophet is someone who is very far from God. When Jonah was in the sea, he was neither close nor far from God, but he was sinking. As he sank, a great fish came and swallowed him up. And Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days and three nights. Jonah began to pray and the fish began to feel very 
strange. It grew sicker and sicker. And finally, it swam to shore and vomited out Jonah onto the dry land. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and tell the people there that they are bad and they must change and become good. This time, Jonah went to Nineveh. He cried out to the people of Nineveh that they were bad and they must change to be good because God had commanded it. God had said that they would all be destroyed if they didn't. Now a prophet is someone who is overjoyed when things that are bad become good. The people of Nineveh listened to God and they turned and became good. They all went about wearing sackcloth and ashes to show how sorry they were. Even the king and queen were sorry and became good. The creatures in the fields were sorry too and they also became good. God did not destroy the city of Nineveh. This made Jonah angry. He had wanted God to destroy the city. These people were not even the people of God. So he went outside and sat on a hill and sulked. He wanted to get his way. God said to Jonah, why are you angry? And God caused a plant to grow up and give Jonah shade as he sat on the hill in the sun. Then, one night, God sent a worm to attack the tree and it withered and died. When the sun came, a strong east wind came and the sun beat down hard on the head of Jonah so that he was faint. He grew angry about the death of the plant. Why are you angry about the plant? God said, I am angry. Jonah said, I am angry enough to die. He thought he still might get his way. God said, you pity the plant, but you did nothing for it. You did not cause it to grow. You didn't care for it. Should I not pity Nineveh, that great city where there are more than a hundred and twenty thousand people and all their cattle? I wonder which part of the story did you like best? I wonder which part of the story was most important? I wonder 
which part of the story do you see yourself in or was about you? I wonder, what difference does this story make? Jonah was a prophet and prophets were people who were given a message from God to share with other people. God wanted Jonah to go to Nineveh, a wicked city filled with people who did not believe in God and did terrible things. The message that God wanted Jonah to share with everyone in Nineveh was that God had seen their wickedness and was going to destroy them all. However, instead of going to Nineveh to share this message, Jonah tried to run away from God. He didn't want to go to Nineveh and tried to get as far away from God and Nineveh as he possibly could by getting on a boat. However, God stops him from getting away and causes him to be swallowed by a giant fish. And God is kind to Jonah and gives him a second chance to do what God had asked him to do. This time, Jonah obeyed and went to Nineveh. In Nineveh, Jonah proclaimed the message that God had seen the wickedness of the city and that the whole city and its people would be destroyed. But Jonah makes no effort in sharing this message. Despite this, the whole of Nineveh, from the king as the most important person in the city, all the way down to the cows, felt sorry about their wickedness their sin and they ask God to forgive them. So God does just that. He forgives everyone in Nineveh because they are truly sorry about their sin and they turn to God and ask for his forgiveness. Jonah is not happy about this at all. This is because he didn't think Nineveh deserved to be forgiven for their wickedness. This is why Jonah tried to run away at the beginning of this story. However, God wanted the people of Nineveh to have the opportunity to feel sorry about their sin and ask God to forgive them. This shows us that God is a forgiving God and that he cares for all people because he has created each and every one of us. Jonah's story shows us that because God created all of us, it's up to him what he does with us, not Jonah and not any other human being because God knows what is best for us. Jonah's story is challenging because it shows us how good God is and how easy it can be for us to get annoyed when things don't turn out the way we want them to. It challenges us to love people who are difficult and shows us that we should not judge others or judge God for how he treats other people. Jonah's story invites us to consider how we understand God's love for his creation which was ultimately shown in the sacrifice of his only son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for us. And because this has happened, we can trust in God and he is so much greater than us and he truly loves each and every one of us. So let us uh, turn to God in prayer now to thank him for this story and all that he has to teach us through it. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for Jonah's story for showing us that you are a kind God and you care about your creation. Thank you that you offer forgiveness to us through your son, Jesus Christ, and his death on the cross. Even offering forgiveness to those who we can often so, so often think are unforgivable. Please help us to see the world as you do, to love others and to forgive them when they do bad things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the
Let me hear it now. After the time when the people of God had crossed over the River Jordan into the Promised Land, some of them began to live in a place called Bethlehem. Many years went by. Then came a time when there was no rain, so the wheat could not grow. Some of the people decided to cross over the Jordan to Moab, where there was food. Naomi went. Naomi's husband went, and their two sons were among those who went. In this land, they were very happy, until Naomi's husband died.
later, her two sons married women from Moab. They were called Ruth and Orpah. Then their husbands died. So that Naomi and Ruth and Orpah were all widows together. Naomi didn't know what to do. So she decided to go back across the desert to her family in Bethlehem. Orpah decided to go back to Moab to live with her mother. But Ruth stayed with Naomi. She said, where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. Your people shall be my people and your God will be my God. So they travelled to Bethlehem, where they found a small place to live. They went into the nearby fields and they gathered grain left over from the harvest for food. People let them do that because they were widows. One of the fields belonged to a man called Boaz. He was rich. He liked Ruth. He saw how hard she worked and how she took care of Naomi. In time, Boaz and Ruth would be married. And they had children. Now, Ruth was a mother and Naomi was a grandmother. She could hold her grandson on her lap. When that little boy grew up, he had a son. And that son was called Jesse. And Jesse had many sons. One of them grew up to be King David, the great king, who was the great grandson of Ruth. I wonder, what part of the story did you like best? I wonder which part of the story was most important. I wonder, was there a bit of the story that you could see yourself in or that was about you? I wonder, what difference does the story make? After God's people were slaves in Egypt and God rescued them, he promised to take them to a new land that would belong to them. This land was a beautiful place where God lived with his people and provided for their every need. However, God's people became unfaithful and started worshipping other gods. 
So a famine came upon that land, which meant that there was no food. One of God's people, Elimelech, took his family away from the promised land into another land called Moab. Elimelech's two sons married women from Moab, Ruth and Orpah. Sadly, Elimelech and his sons died in Moab, which meant that Naomi, Ruth and Orpah were left without husbands, so they had no one to look after them. Naomi decided to return to the land that God had promised his people and told Ruth and Orpah to return to their families. Orpah obeyed, but Ruth clung to Naomi and returned to the promised land with her and began to worship God. This was brave because Ruth did not know what her future would hold, but she loved Naomi and was loyal to her. To get food, Ruth went to a field owned by a man called Boaz who was one of God's people. Ruth would collect leftover grain from the harvest and worked very long hours to provide for herself and Naomi. Boaz noticed Ruth and was amazed by her loyalty to Naomi. And so his workers, he told his workers to leave behind extra grain for Ruth to collect. Naomi was overjoyed when she heard about this because Boaz came from the same family as Naomi which meant that it was his responsibility to take care of his family when Ruth and Naomi's husbands were dead. Naomi instructed Ruth to meet with Boaz to remind him of this responsibility, which was commanded by God, and Boaz agreed to marry Ruth. This made her officially part of God's people. The sad and difficult situation Ruth and Naomi were at the beginning of this story is completely turned on its head. Now they are full of joy as Ruth married Boaz and they have a baby boy. This baby boy became the grandfather of the great King David in the Bible, who is related to Jesus himself. How amazing! This shows that Ruth, who was once not part of God's people, is now at the centre of God's people, so much so that she is related to Jesus. With trust like Ruth, we too can be at the centre of God's people. This story is an amazing example of how God is at work in everything we do. Because just as he provides food and protection for Ruth and Naomi through Boaz, God also protects and provides for us through his son, Jesus Christ. God is faithful to those who trust in him. And all that we have is a gift from God. Ruth and Boaz are great examples of loyalty to God because they honour him and obey him. Praying and reading the Bible are both great ways we can know God better so we can live for him just like Ruth and Boaz. So let us join together in prayer now. Dear God, thank you that you are involved in day-to-day life and that you care about even the smallest of details in our lives. We pray that we would remember to thank you for all the good things in our lives, knowing that they come from you. And when we face challenges, may we turn to you for strength and remember that you are with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we come together this morning to thank you for all those that share our journey through life with us, for all those generations that have gone before us, that have given us insight into your holy ways, for the stories of Noah, of Jonah, and of Ruth, all who have faced adversity, but who also serve as a reminder of the power of having you at the centre of our lives. Almighty God, you proclaim your truth in every age, through every generation, in many different ways. And we turn our thoughts to those in today's society, that are facing adversity in their own lives or in their own communities. We pray for all those countries around the world where the COVID-19 pandemic continues to spread 
with new cases increasing. For all those that have lost loved ones and are grieving. For all those that are suffering from the impact of isolation and social distancing. May they all know your comforting presence. And may we too do all that we can to be supportive to others. We pray for all those that are living with economic burdens, those that are struggling with less income and rising costs, those that are facing job insecurities, and all those that have no real sense of what the future may hold for them. May they all know your steadfast companionship, and may we too be generous in our support to others. We pray for all those in positions of leadership and authority, those with huge responsibilities that rest on their shoulders and have difficult decisions to make. May they be guided by a spirit of duty to all and with the clarity and wisdom to discern the best options for the many and not just the privileged few. And may we too speak up to confront injustice wherever and however we find it. We pray for our own church at this time. With the easing of lockdown restrictions and the potential of having our buildings reopen, we pray for those responsible of navigating a new future way of worship, trying to maintain the safest option for the majority. And may we too be as supportive and as cooperative as we can. Loving Father, we may not know the way ahead, but we do know that you are with us and will never leave us. May that assurance help us to face all that we must face and strengthen us to continue to step out in faith, holding the Christ light for one another knowing that you are with us and you go before us always. All of this we pray in the name of our Saviour, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. One more step along the world I go One more step along the world I go From the old things to the Traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. From the corners of the world I turn, more and more about the world I learn. All the new things that I see, you'll be looking at along with me, and it's from. May the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and in the love of Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, 
be with us all, this day and always. Amen.